Ethan Venice German, Der Tod in Venetig, is a novella by German author Thomas Mann, published in 1912. 1. It presents an ennobled writer who visits Venice and is liberated, uplifted, and then increasingly obsessed by the sight of a boy in a family of Polish tourists, Tadzio, so nicknamed for Tadeusz. Tadzio was based on a real boy named Vladzio whom Mann had observed during his 1911 visit to the city. Paul Thomas Mann, UK. Main, Mann, US. MN, Mann, 1. German pronunciation. Thomas Mann, I. The 6th of June 1875 12 August 1955, was a German novelist, short story writer, social critic, philanthropist, essayist, and the 1929 Nobel Prize in Literature laureate. His highly symbolic and ironic epic novels and novellas are noted for their insight into the psychology of the artist and the intellectual. His analysis and critique of the European and German soul used modernized versions of German and biblical stories, as well as the ideas of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Arthur Schopenhauer. Mann was a member of the Hanseatic Mann family and portrayed his family and class in his first novel, Buddenbrooks. His older brother was the radical writer Heinrich Mann Three of Mann's six children Erika Mann, Klaus Mann and Golo Mann also became significant German writers. When Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933, Mann fled to Switzerland. When World War II broke out in 1939, he moved to the United States, then returned to Switzerland in 1952. Mann is one of the best-known exponents of the so-called exiliterature, German literature written in exile by those who oppose the Hitler regime. Plot. Edit. The main character is Gustav von Aschenbach, a famous Silesian author in his early 50s who recently has been ennobled in honor of his artistic achievement thus acquiring the aristocratic, von, in his name. He is a man dedicated to his art, disciplined and ascetic to the point of severity, who was widowed at a young age. As the story opens, he is strolling outside a cemetery and sees a coarse-looking, red-haired foreigner who stares back at him belligerently. Aschenbach walks away, embarrassed but curiously stimulated. He has a vision of a primordial swamp wilderness, fertile, exotic and full of lurking danger. Soon afterward, he resolves to take a holiday. After a false start in traveling to Pula on the Austro-Hungarian coast now in Croatia, Aschenbach realizes he was meant to go to Venice and takes a suite in the Grand Hotel des Bains on the island of Lido. While shipbound and en route to the island, he sees an elderly man in company with a group of high-spirited youths, who has tried hard to create the illusion of his own youth with a wig, false teeth, makeup, and foppish attire. Aschenbach turns away in disgust. Later, he has a disturbing encounter with an unlicensed gondolier, another red-haired, skull-faced foreigner, who repeats, I can row you well, when Aschenbach orders him to return to the wharf. Aschenbach checks into his hotel, where at dinner he sees an aristocratic Polish family at a nearby table. Among them is an adolescent boy of about 14 in a sailor suit. Aschenbach, startled, realizes that the boy is supremely beautiful, like a Greek sculpture. His elder sisters, by contrast, are so severely dressed that they look like nuns. Later, after spying the boy and his family at a beach, Aschenbach overhears Tadzio, the boy's name, and conceives what he first interprets as an uplifting, artistic interest. Soon the hot, humid weather begins to affect Aschenbach's health, and he decides to leave early and move to a cooler location. On the morning of his planned departure, he sees Tadzio again, and a powerful feeling of regret sweeps over him. When he reaches the railway station and discovers his trunk has been misplaced, he pretends to be angry, but is really overjoyed, he decides to remain in Venice and wait for his lost luggage. He happily returns to the hotel and thinks no more of leaving. Over the next days and weeks, Aschenbach's interest in the beautiful boy develops into an obsession. He watches him constantly and secretly follows him around Venice. One evening, the boy directs a charming smile at him, looking, Aschenbach thinks, like Narcissus smiling at his own reflection. Disconcerted, Aschenbach rushes outside, and in the empty garden whispers aloud, I love you. Aschenbach next takes a trip into the city of Venice, where he sees a few discreetly worded notices from the health department warning of an unspecified contagion and advising people to avoid eating shellfish. He smells an unfamiliar strong odor everywhere, later realizing it is disinfectant. However, the authorities adamantly deny that the contagion is serious, and tourists continue to wander obliviously round the city. Aschenbach at first ignores the danger because it somehow pleases him to think that the city's disease is akin to his own hidden, corrupting passion for the boy. During this period, a third red-haired and disreputable-looking man crosses Aschenbach's path, 
This one belongs to a troupe of street singers who entertain at the hotel one night. Aschenbach listens entranced to songs that, in his former life, he would have despised all the while stealing glances at Tadzio, who is leaning on a nearby parapet in a classically beautiful pose. The boy eventually returns. Aschenbach's glances, and although the moment is brief, it instills in the writer a sense that the attraction may be mutual. Next, Aschenbach rallies his self-respect and decides to discover the reason for the health notices posted in the city. After being repeatedly assured that the Sirocco is the only health risk, he finds a British travel agent who reluctantly admits that there is a serious cholera epidemic in Venice. Aschenbach considers warning Tadzio's mother of the danger, however, he decides not to, knowing that if he does, Tadzio will leave the hotel and be lost to him. But Aschenbach is not rational, nothing is as abhorrent to anyone who is beside himself as returning into himself. The awareness that he was complicit, that he too was guilty, intoxicated him. 2. One night, a dream filled with orgiastic Dionysian imagery reveals to him the sexual nature of his feelings for Tadzio. Afterward, he begins staring at the boy so openly and following him so persistently that Aschenbach feels the boy's guardians have finally noticed, and they take to warning Tadzio whenever he approaches too near the strange, solitary man. However, Aschenbach's feelings, although passionately intense, remain unvoiced, he never touches Tadzio or speaks to him, and while there is some indication that Tadzio is aware of his admiration, the two exchange nothing more than occasionally surreptitious glances. Aschenbach begins to fret about his aging face and body. In an attempt to look more attractive, he visits the hotel's barber shop almost daily, where the barber persuades him to have his hair dyed and his face painted to look more youthful. The result is a fairly close approximation to the old man on the ship who had so appalled Aschenbach. Freshly dyed and rouged, he again shadows Tadzio through Venice in the oppressive heat. He loses sight of the boy in the heart of the city, then, exhausted and thirsty, he buys and eats some overripe strawberries and rests in an abandoned square, contemplating the platonic ideal of beauty amid the ruins of his own once formidable dignity. A few days later, Aschenbach goes to the lobby in his hotel, feeling ill and weak, and discovers that the Polish family plans to leave after lunch. He goes to the beach to his usual deck chair. Tadzio is there, unsupervised for once, and accompanied by Yashu, an older boy. A fight starts between the two boys, and Tadzio is quickly bested. Afterward, he angrily leaves his companion and wades over to Aschenbach's part of the beach, where he stands for a moment looking out to sea, then turns halfway around to look at his admirer. To Aschenbach, it is as if the boy is beckoning to him. He tries to rise and follow, only to collapse sideways into his chair. His body is discovered minutes later. Man's original intention was to write about, passion is confusion and degradation, after having been fascinated by the true story of Goethe's love for 18-year-old Baroness Ulrich von Lovetso, which had led Goethe to write his, Marian Bad Elegy. 3. The May 1911 death of composer Gustav Mahler in Vienna and man's interest in the boy Vladzio during summer 1911 vacation in Venice were additional experiences occupying his thoughts. He used the story to illuminate certain convictions about the relationship between life and mind, with Aschenbach representing the intellect. Mann also was influenced by Sigmund Freud and his views on dreams, as well as by philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who had visited Venice several times. Death in Venice follows the journey of Gustav von Aschenbach, a renowned author in his early 50s, who decides to travel to Venice for a vacation to overcome a writer's block. While in Venice, he becomes captivated by the beauty of the city and becomes fixated on a young Polish boy named Tadzio, who is staying at the same hotel as him with his family. Aschenbach's infatuation with Tadzio grows into an obsession, and he begins to follow the boy around Venice, watching him from a distance. He is torn between his desire for the boy and his realization of the inappropriate nature of his feelings. Aschenbach becomes increasingly aware of his own aging and mortality, seeing Tadzio as a symbol of youth and beauty that he is desperate to possess. As the days pass, Venice is struck by a cholera epidemic, but Aschenbach chooses to stay in the city despite the growing danger. He continues to follow Tadzio, even as his health begins to deteriorate. In the end, Aschenbach dies on the beach in Venice, gazing at Tadzio from afar, his obsession with beauty and youth ultimately leading to his demise. The novella ends with Tadzio acknowledging Aschenbach's presence with a slight smile, suggesting that Aschenbach's pursuit of beauty has been both futile and destructive. Death in Venice is a deeply symbolic and complex work that has been the subject of much critical analysis. 
One of the central themes of the novella is the tension between the Apollonian and Dionysian elements of life. Aschenbach, representing the Apollonian, is a figure of order, discipline, and reason. In contrast, Tadzio, representing the Dionysian, embodies beauty, sensuality, and the irrational. Manus's Venice is a backdrop for the story, a city known for its decadence, beauty, and decay, mirroring Aschenbach's own internal struggles and the themes of the novella. The cholera epidemic that strikes the city can be seen as a metaphor for the destructive nature of Aschenbach's obsession with beauty and youth. Critics have also analyzed death in Venice, in the context of man's own life and sexuality. Man, who was married with six children, had homosexual tendencies, which some see reflected in Aschenbach's obsession with the young boy Tadzio. Overall, Death in Venice, is a rich and multi-layered work that explores themes of beauty, desire, mortality, and the nature of art. It has been praised for its psychological depth, its evocative prose, and its exploration of complex and timeless themes. Here's a character sketch of Gustav von Aschenbach from, Death in Venice, with examples from the novella. Name, Gustav von Aschenbach. Character Traits. Disciplined, Aschenbach is portrayed as a disciplined and dedicated writer, committed to his craft. This is shown in his daily routine and his commitment to his work, even while on vacation in Venice. For example, in the novella, it is mentioned that Aschenbach writes for several hours every morning, showing his commitment to his craft. Reserved. Aschenbach is a reserved and introspective character, often keeping his thoughts and emotions to himself. This is shown in his internal monologues and his observations of the world around him, such as his contemplation of beauty and art while watching Tadzio. Obsessive. Aschenbach becomes increasingly obsessive over the course of the novella, particularly in his fixation on Tadzio. His obsession leads him to neglect his health and safety, as he becomes more and more consumed by his desire for the boy. For example, Aschenbach follows Tadzio around Venice, watching him from a distance and fantasizing about him, showing the extent of his obsession. Intellectual. Aschenbach is portrayed as an intellectual, with a deep appreciation for art, culture, and beauty. This is shown in his reflections on art and beauty throughout the novella, as well as his admiration for Tadzio, whom he sees as the embodiment of classical beauty. Example. One example of Aschenbach's character traits is his reaction to the news of the cholera epidemic in Venice. Despite being warned of the danger and urged to leave the city, Aschenbach chooses to stay, driven by his obsession with Tadzio. This decision highlights his obsessive nature, as well as his willingness to ignore rationality and risk his own safety in pursuit of his desires. Character Traits Repressed Aschenbach is a character who represses his emotions and desires, especially his homosexual desires. Throughout the novella, he struggles with his attraction to Tadzio, trying to suppress his feelings and maintain his composure. This repression ultimately leads to his downfall, as he is unable to confront or express his true feelings. Isolated. Aschenbach is portrayed as a lonely and isolated figure, both physically and emotionally. This is shown in his solitary lifestyle and his lack of close relationships. Despite being surrounded by people in Venice, Aschenbach remains emotionally distant and isolated, unable to connect with those around him. Vain. Aschenbach is also depicted as somewhat vain and concerned with his appearance and reputation. This is shown in his reaction to the aging process, as he becomes increasingly preoccupied with his physical appearance and his desire to appear youthful and attractive. Tragic. Aschenbach is ultimately a tragic figure, whose downfall is brought about by his own flaws and weaknesses. His obsession with Tadzio leads him to neglect his health and safety, ultimately resulting in his death. Aschenbach's tragedy lies in his inability to reconcile his desires with his sense of morality and propriety, leading to his ultimate destruction. Example. One example of Aschenbach's repressed nature is his reaction to seeing Tadzio's family for the first time. Despite feeling a strong attraction to Tadzio, Aschenbach tries to rationalize his feelings and convince himself that his interest is purely artistic and intellectual. This internal struggle highlights Aschenbach's repressed desires and his unwillingness to confront his true feelings. Themes in, Death in Venice Beauty and Decay One of the central themes of the novella is the contrast between beauty and decay. Venice is portrayed as a city of great beauty, but also one that is decaying and crumbling. This theme is reflected in Aschenbach's own life, as he is drawn to the beauty of Tadzio but is also aware of his own aging and mortality. Desire and Obsession Another key theme is desire and obsession. 
Ashinbach's infatuation with Tadzio becomes an all-consuming obsession that leads him to neglect everything else in his life. This theme explores the destructive nature of desire and the lengths to which people will go to fulfill their desires. Art and Artist Man also explores the theme of art and the artist in Death in Venice. Ashenbach is a writer who is dedicated to his craft, but his obsession with Tadzio blurs the lines between art and life. This theme raises questions about the nature of art and the sacrifices that artists make in pursuit of their craft. Mortality and Immortality The novella also deals with themes of mortality and immortality. Ashenbach's obsession with Tadzio can be seen as an attempt to transcend his own mortality and achieve a kind of immortality through his art. However, his ultimate demise serves as a reminder of the inevitability of death. Example One example of the theme of beauty and decay is the description of Venice itself. Men portrays Venice as a city of great beauty, with its stunning architecture and picturesque canals. However, he also highlights the city's decay, with its crumbling buildings and stagnant waters. This contrast serves as a metaphor for Aschenbach's own internal struggle between his desire for beauty and his awareness of the fleeting nature of life. Here are a few more themes from, Death in Venice. Sexuality and Repression The novella explores themes of sexuality and repression, particularly through Aschenbach's repressed homosexual desires. Aschenbach struggles to come to terms with his attraction to Tadzio, which he tries to suppress and rationalize. This theme highlights the social and personal consequences of repressing one's true desires. Illusion versus Reality Death in Venice also examines the theme of illusion versus reality. Aschenbach's idealized image of Tadzio as a symbol of beauty and perfection is shattered when he sees the boy's imperfections up close. This theme questions the nature of perception and the role of illusion in shaping our understanding of reality. Decadence and Decline The novella portrays Venice as a city in decline, overrun by tourists and plagued by a cholera epidemic. This theme of decadence and decline reflects Aschenbach's own internal decay, as his obsession with Tadzio leads him down a path of self-destruction. Isolation and Alienation Aschenbach is depicted as a lonely and isolated figure, both physically and emotionally. This theme of isolation and alienation is further emphasized by his inability to connect with those around him, leading to his sense of being an outsider in the world. Example an example of the theme of illusion versus reality is Aschenbach's perception of Tadzio. Initially, Aschenbach idealizes Tadzio as the epitome of beauty and perfection, creating an illusion of the boy in his mind. However, when Aschenbach sees Tadzio up close and notices his imperfections, such as his crooked teeth, the illusion is shattered, and he is forced to confront the reality of the situation. This moment highlights the theme of illusion versus reality and the impact of perception on our understanding of the world. Setting. The novella is primarily set in Venice, Italy, during the early 20th century. Mann vividly describes the city's enchanting beauty, with its canals, historic buildings, and picturesque landscapes. Venice serves as a symbolic backdrop, representing both beauty and decay, mirroring Aschenbach's own internal struggles. Tone. The tone of, Death in Venice, is melancholic and introspective. Mann's prose is rich and evocative, conveying a sense of longing and desire. The tone becomes increasingly dark and foreboding as Aschenbach's obsession grows and the cholera epidemic spreads through the city. Writing Style Man's writing style in, Death in Venice, is characterized by its detailed descriptions, introspective narration, and philosophical musings. He uses lush, poetic language to create a vivid and immersive atmosphere, drawing the reader into Aschenbach's world and inner thoughts. Genre Death in Venice, is often classified as a novella or a short novel. It falls within the realm of literary fiction, with its focus on complex themes, rich character development, and evocative prose. Dialogue The novella contains minimal dialogue, with most of the story being told through Aschenbach's internal monologues and observations. When dialogue does occur, it is usually brief and serves to advance the plot or reveal aspects of the characters' personalities. Structure the novella is divided into several chapters, each focusing on different aspects of Aschenbach's journey in Venice. Mann employs a nonlinear narrative structure, with flashbacks and digressions that provide insight into Aschenbach's past and inner thoughts. This nontraditional structure adds depth and complexity to the story, reflecting the fragmented nature of Aschenbach's psyche. Plot The plot of, Death in Venice, revolves around Aschenbach's descent into obsession and self-destruction. 
As he becomes increasingly infatuated with Tadzio, his life unravels, leading to his tragic demise. The plot is driven by Ashenbach's internal struggles and desires, rather than external events, highlighting the psychological depth of the story. One of the key narrative techniques used in Death in Venice is the use of a third-person omniscient narrator. This narrator has access to the thoughts and feelings of the protagonist, Gustav von Aschenbach, as well as other characters, allowing for a deep exploration of their inner lives. Through this narrative technique, man is able to delve into Aschenbach's psyche, revealing his innermost thoughts, desires, and fears. This allows the reader to gain a deep understanding of Aschenbach's character and motivations, as well as the complexities of his obsession with Tadzio. The omniscient narrator also provides a broader perspective on the events of the novella, offering insights into the social, cultural, and historical context of the story. This narrative technique allows man to explore complex themes and ideas, such as the nature of beauty, the conflict between the Apollonian and Dionysian, and the consequences of repressed desire. Overall, the use of a third-person omniscient narrator in Death in Venice adds depth and complexity to the narrative, allowing man to create a rich and immersive world that explores the depths of the human psyche. Significance Death in Venice is significant for its exploration of complex themes such as beauty, desire, mortality, and the nature of art. It is considered a masterpiece of German literature and a seminal work of modernist fiction. The novella's rich symbolism, psychological depth, and evocative prose have made it a classic of world literature. Relevance The themes and motifs in Death in Venice continue to be relevant today, exploring universal aspects of the human experience such as the pursuit of beauty, the nature of desire, and the struggle with mortality. The novella's exploration of repression and obsession also remains pertinent in discussions of psychology and human behavior. Legacy Death in Venice has left a lasting legacy in literature, influencing generations of writers and artists. Its impact can be seen in works that explore similar themes or employ similar narrative techniques. The novella's enduring popularity and critical acclaim attest to its lasting legacy in the literary canon. Contribution Through Death in Venice, Thomas Mann made significant contributions to the development of modernist literature. His exploration of inner consciousness, use of symbolism, and experimentation with narrative structure helped to push the boundaries of traditional storytelling and pave the way for future generations of writers. Impact The impact of Death in Venice extends beyond literature to other art forms such as film, music, and visual arts. The novella has been adapted into several films and has inspired numerous artists and musicians. Its exploration of the human condition and the complexities of desire continue to resonate with audiences around the world. Thomas Mann was a German novelist, short story writer, social critic, philanthropist, essayist, and the 1929 Nobel Prize in Literature laureate. His highly symbolic and ironic epic novels and novellas are noted for their insight into the psychology of the artist and the intellectual. His analysis and critique of the European and German soul used modernized German and biblical stories, as well as the ideas of Goethe, Nietzsche, and Schopenhauer. Mann was born in 1875 in Lübeck, Germany, into a wealthy merchant family. He began writing at an early age but initially pursued a career in journalism and as a clerk. His first novel, Buddenbrooks, published in 1901, brought him immediate fame and established his reputation as a major literary figure. Mann's other notable works include The Magic Mountain, Tony O'Kroger, and Dr. Faustus. He was a critic of the Nazi regime and went into exile in Switzerland and later the United States during World War II. After the war, he returned to Switzerland, where he died in 1955. Mann's writing is characterized by its deep psychological insight, its exploration of complex philosophical and moral themes, and its richly symbolic language. He is considered one of the greatest German writers of the 20th century and his works continue to be widely read and studied today.